This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Look at what I found. I saw the cows going through the timber and uh, there's, a, there's a nice grass field back over there. That's the direction they came from. They're all walking up through this woods over here. I'm like, where are they going? So I followed them. Look what they found. This is on a newly leased farm. I had never been on this ridge before. But uh, Gary actually has a gate right here. I just opened it. <laughs> yeah. So I got two gates, one on that side, one on this side to funnel the cows in here a little better. This is our uh, solar charger. I love these things. This, this one is made by uh, Patriot. And it's an SG-1000. Don't tell me what the, don't ask me what the uh, jewels are. I forgot. I think it's like a three or maybe a two or three jewel. Anyway, it's got its own built-in battery. That is the uh, solar panel right here. So it gets sunlight, you see it's flashing. I promise you, you don't want to touch that. So the green lead that comes out of there goes to onto uh, anything that's steel. This is a steel post. And um, then the hot wire is right here. It's going onto our pod, which that's hooked on cold. And it's cold on the other end. And so that charger is actually just powered up that one single strand. Folks, it's hot. I mean, I'm talking... Mm eight to nine thousand volts and with the ground being wet from the snow melting the cows are going to get the full blunt of it but i want to show you this this is a nice little civil pasture area uh gary he's done some work in here you can tell i don't know if he brought a dozer in here it kind of looks like he did many many years ago he pushed a bunch of the trees out because there, there's the brush pile down there they're all rotted it's probably pushed in maybe 20 years ago. But he, he left a few trees in here. And he did get the, the south-facing slope opened up enough. I was surprised. I mean, there's a lot of grass growing in here. This was solid timber. Okay. And so when you get your tree spacing, I mean, he left some. There's a nice uh, black oak he left. Uh, there's a good white oak down there. Here's another black oak. There's a white oak. Um, there's a squirrel. There's a squirrel den right there. Check that out. Folks, when you're out and you're uh, cutting trees, you want to look for stuff like that. Don't cut those trees down. I don't care how bad you want to cut it. Don't cut it down. That's a den. And there's squirrels raising in there. And it's, uh, you know, I'm not into destroying dens for animals. It's a black oak. You know, it's, it's probably not worth that much anyway if you cut it. I mean, you get firewood and some shiitake mushrooms out of it, the, the top. But, you know, it's also a really nice hole. <laughs> there's squirrels living in there. I'll leave it alone. Gotta have some squirrels. You need the squirrels. Why do you need squirrels? Well, squirrels feed the hawks. Uh, they feed eagles. And they feed coyotes. And, of course, the coyotes, they don't have squirrels to eat. Do you think they might be carrying off a baby lamb? Or a chicken? Or if you're raising pasture chickens, you don't have anything out here for the coyotes to eat? Yeah. It's all a spider web of life, folks. Don't get in this mindset you got to kill everything. It'll put you out of business. It'll, it'll, it'll actually take you off your farm. I've seen people do it. But this is all covered in snow. Of course, with the south, this, this is facing south right here. Plus, to get up to 42 to 44. That sun is trying to pop out. It's trying. I can feel it. If that sun pops out, this snow will be gone today, especially with the animals grazing on it. And see, those up there don't know the gate's open yet. There's 300 cows in here. There's only maybe 20 on this ridge. But they're going to find it. They'll, they'll see it. 
cats even cows see their buddies on the other side of the wire or in another spot it's like well, wait a minute what do y'all got over there are y'all eating snicker bars or what and they they'll come check it out i was surprised there's a lot of grass in here we almost didn't turn them in this paddock and i told isaac this morning i'm like let's just open that gate over there maybe they'll come in here and get some good out of it well, they're certainly getting some good i mean look at it that's that's high quality winter star pot yeah it's got snow on it that's a good way to get your hands full but look at it look at that you know, if you had to come up with this much stockpile in, let's say, a rolled up bale of hay, how many bales would you have to unroll here to equal this? I'd say there's two acres here. How many bales would you have to unroll to amount for this? A lot. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. I bet it would take, I bet it would take 10. 10 big round bales to equal the forage just right here. Well, at $100 a bale for a 1,200 pound net wrap bale, there's 10 or 12 bales here. Let's just say 10, keep the math easy. There's a thousand dollars worth of feed right here on this two acres. There's a thousand dollars worth of feed right here in January, the end of January. Oh, come on, son. Oh, I can feel it, guys, ladies, it's coming. We haven't seen sun. Oh gosh, how long has it been? A long time. I don't think we've seen sun for eight or 10 days. I can feel it. It's trying to poke through those clouds up there. And when it does, look out. The snow's gonna go bye-bye. I don't know, folks. There's something rewarding about being in trees. So this would be, you know, a good, definition of some civil pasture you got the trees you got the forage and you got the animals and if you just got trees well then you you can get some cash out of that with you know cutting logs maybe every 10 to 15 years but if you got livestock and you can grow forage under the trees well now you got cash flow you got cash flow you got cash flow every year not every 10 or 15 for a log cutting. You got cash flow every year. And the trees, you can tell these trees are growing well because uh, Gary spaced them out nicely. I mean, these, these trees are cranking. It looks to me like this is maybe one of his hay feeding areas because there's, there's two big bale rings. Of course, we don't use bale rings, but he's got them propped up there. I'll bet you that's what he did because he, he, he would feed them right in here in the winter time because it's completely surrounded by timber and this would be a, a pretty nice warm spot to keep animals so this had some fertility put down on it isn't that a wonderful sound Yeah, I just walked by some other, where is it, oh here we go, yeah, over it. there's some more, it's all over here, oh so those aren't raisins, don't eat them, <laughs> that's a deer, deer poop, so the deer, the deer are getting a lot of good out of this too. They're in this silver pasture area eating the sprouts and different things and fertilizing it. So we got deer and we got cattle both in here. And we hope to bring the goats and the sheep through here this summer. Work on some of these sprouts. Yep. Now that we got the goats where we can hold them with two wires. They came that way to us from Sean. And now we've got them down to one wire with the sheep. You can hold goats with one wire. It opens up all kinds of possibilities. But you don't want those animals getting hungry. You gotta keep them moving. There's another cow that made it through. <laughs> She's like, 
it won't be too long. They'll all be over here. Yeah. Is that 325? It is. That'd be a bull calf that was born last spring. He, he's a thick little bugger. He's just thick. Give him another year and a half to two years, he is gonna be an absolute stud. There comes a the cow. Yeah, so by the night when we move them, this will all be grazed. These animals are gonna have working on this pretty good. So folks, I'm gonna get out of here and have a good one and hope to see some of y'all at our grazing school. That's coming up here in May. And uh, you can sign up on our website, greenpasturesfarm.net. The advanced school with Ian is the first week and the second school uh, with me and um, <laughs> the sheep guy. Um, Abram, Abram Bowerman. Uh, that's going to be the second week of May. So hope to see some of y'all there and uh, y'all have a great day. We'll see you down the road.